okay. We're out here in the field with the system B. And we come to a popular spot where we can still pick some coins out. They're not as plentiful as they used to be, but using our scopes, we can get into the area and give it a try to make a recovery. Now, we don't make a recovery on every spot that our scope puts us into. Um, sometimes there's a lot of reasons for that. Sometimes there's too much junk in that spot. It's hard to use your detector to make a recovery. Other times, uh, uh, it's, it's a deal where we have to come back, maybe, and go back over the spot meticulously and even dig some junk to find a piece of silver or something. But in, in either case, we've made a lot of recoveries with the uh, uh, System B, uh, along with the 20 and 301, and using the same method. They're all, they all basically are used the same way. Uh, the difference between the models are that they're, some of them are a little bit more sophisticated and have a little less drift and things like that. But this System B is set up to succeed, so that you can succeed with it. You get into areas of high conductors, and check out with your scope, and, uh, with your metal detector and your scope, and it, it should bring hours of pleasure. Having a lot of fun getting there, see what's in that area. Now, what we're going to do here is we're we picked an old homestead, uh, long since uh, vacated, uh, and we're going to we're going to try a live shot here with the system B. Um, first thing we're going to do is learn to sweep. You get the when you get your your instrument out of the box and everything, learn how to sweep. So let's start with the on-off switch to the on position, and then the sw silver and gold switch to the silver mold right now because we're going to use uh, a silver target to tune the instrument, or uh, we're going to hunt in silver. In either case, uh, get your instrument set up that way. Um, on the system B, I like to hunt around 8. Now you can tune it, you know, there'll be different tunings, different times, and stuff like that, so you have to tune it to a target. But I'm, I'm going to hunt today around 8, and the 8 is between the low and high. That's where I put the uh, 8 on the tuning. Now that's basically all I have to do sweep this instrument out of the field. And once I know my sweep, and I'm going to show you how to sweep the instrument. Take the system B, put it down by the side like this, bring it up, keep your arm in right here, and then when you sweep, move the torso, the top of your body. Hold the instrument balanced like this. You can dip it a little bit, but don't dip it like this. Just maybe five degrees like that. Make sure that it's coming right straight down your arm right here like this. Okay, you bring it up to that that level and then you move your torso see I'm keeping the instrument the same in other words balance like this and then you move your torso now once you move your torso uh, from right to left like this you'll see that the instrument wants to stay in that position in other words it, it pulls in other words attracts bring it up like this bring it across and it attracts like that See, when it's attracting that area, what you do is continue with your movement. In other words, get it up like this. I'm not moving my arm at all. I'm just bringing my body like this. And then the instrument's pulling back in a direction. Now, you can loosen it up a little bit. You can bring it up, bring it across nice and even. See how I got it right there? Bring it across nice and even. And then you'll see that it hits and you continue on and basically what it's doing here is repelling and then when you go the opposite way like this for example I'm going from right to left it hits towards the target as I bring it back like that from left to right it pulls goes right straight down my arm straight line of vision towards a, what we call the primary line so do it slow at first don't get real uh, a whole lot in a hurry about uh, moving the, the, the scope real fast. In other words, you don't pick it up and do it like that because you don't know it good enough yet to do that. Now some individuals I've seen hold it out like this and do it and I don't have a problem with that if that feels comfortable for you and you and you feel that you're having some success with that's fine. I'm just showing you the way that it's always been successful, the way that uh, 
other individuals I have shown me and I've used it and, and we've had some success with it. It's the fastest way to get started. But if you feel comfortable picking it up, like I use, you want to open up here a little bit, I don't have a problem with that. You bring it up like this, you bring it across. See, I've opened up a little bit. You can do that. But still, I'm using my body along with my arm right there. And then when I hit, hit, bring it back, and it'll come back in. Now, sometimes what you have to do is when you, if you want to bring it from left to right, for example, some individuals like this. They bring it across like that. They keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. It pulls back in. But as you get out here, you get less accuracy. So that's why we recommend keeping it down by your side like this. Bring it across with your torso. You'll get the best accuracy right here. Then bring it back across like that. It'll level in. Take a shot right straight out for you. Give you your primary line. All right. I'm going to get it. Now, I'm going to put the, uh, the ropes out today on this particular one to get you started. Uh, get this training film going a little bit to give you an idea of what's happening here. And then I'll take my detector and we'll see if we can make a recovery out here. Now, once you learn this, the sweep method, and you bring it across and you get your hit and start to pull in a direction, come back and lock the instrument like that, it'll lock in. Now if it doesn't lock in and you just get a hit from one side like that, then you may want to start get a sample out and start tuning the instrument to get it coming in both sides. Some individuals only use one side sweep, which is okay. I'm coming from right to left, bring it across, have a hit like that, they just stop and hold the instrument. The instrument will settle in on the area of interest. Watch that again. Bring it up, you can dip it down like that, bring it up, bring it across, you get the attraction, just stop, hold the instrument, and it will point right down at the target area. Now, I got my primary line right here, and the first thing I would do to, on my primary line is put a, if I'm out in the field, I don't run ropes when I'm out in the field, I just put a, a little something in the ground like that to give me a kind of an idea where I'm at. Now, once you do that, take a right angle on the instrument. In other words, I'm gonna go over about 30 feet, About 30 foot here on uh, in coin because we're coin hunting today. And bring it back across, or come down your primary line until you get that first hit. Now I like to tell a lot of individuals: you may have one, two, or three hits across that primary line. That might be something out in the distance. Therefore, when you're making it, when you're making a triangulation, there may not be nothing there where where one of your uh, crossings may be. So what you do is the first thing you do is you come down your primary line, left to right, to your first hit. In other words, okay, now I can see that it's crossing the primary line about 40 or 50 foot away in, in this particular uh, in, uh, demonstration. And uh, that's where we're going to put our, our uh, area of interest. But Let's say that we bring it across and it's pointing out way down the primary, way out there. That means that the target's way out there. And I don't usually, if I'm out coin hunting, I'm not, I let them go. I can, I can hunt them down some other time. I usually just want to hunt in the area of where I'm at. I like hits that range between, let's say, 30 and 150 feet. That's, that's where I like to hunt with my coin hunting. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put down the lines, get into the area of interest, and uh, let's see what's going on with our detector. Okay, now what I did is I, I laid out the uh, ropes to give you an idea what this should look like on a coin hunt. Now here's my, my rope hanging out, laid down on the ground, stretched out. Going into this area down here where this bush is at. Now, can I get the shot of this other one over here? I appreciate it, Mr. Cameron. Now, here is about 30, 30 foot over. It's my second shot. It's going right in there where that, that bush is at. So, that's my area of interest. Now, 
once you have an area of interest, and what I say, you make a mark on the ground, move over 30 feet, make another mark on the ground, you can get pretty close. You don't have to be exact on this. If you get into a four by four or six by six area, that's fine. That's fine. It don't take long to detect that. If you get a good a good signal out of there or a coin or, or a piece of jewelry or something, that's all we're looking for here. All right, anyways, we, got, we have our um, triangulation, our area of interest out there. The next thing we're, we're going to have to do here, because the grass is a little bit high, is that we're going to have to take our uh, uh, weed whacker and cut an area for us ourselves and then uh, uh, get the detector and uh, get in there and see what we got. sure that you have all the gear necessary to make a recovery here. Make sure you have a real good digger, real strong digger. Uh, I like to use a, I didn't use to use them before, but I use them more now than ever. It's the pinpointer. And um, and I also carry uh, up here in these Pennsylvania hills, you got to have some root cutters to take care of them roots because it gets pretty, pretty tough up here to make a recovery if you don't have one. Anyways, <clears throat> I'm going to run in the uh, tab mode. I'll drop it down a little bit below the tab, just in case there's a gold ring in here somewhere. And this is the area of interest right here. So what I have to do is meticulously work this, and uh, I can talk to you while we're doing that. I'm running the discrimination. There's, there's quite a bit of junk around these old uh, uh, foundations and uh, yards and uh, we're just looking for a good a good signal now if you notice <clears throat> I'm using this very small coil so that I can get in between uh, a lot of the junk and I'm used to working I, I, I can't tell you how how much improvement I've made in my my treasure hunting game by using a small coil like this and making recoveries using my scope and the uh, combination of a small coil now I do use a big coil in treasure hunt, uh, uh, in cash hunting, <coughs> excuse me, in cash hunting, and I also use the uh, the conventional eight, nine inch coils uh, a lot of times in certain places. But when it comes to uh, uh, using a scope in combination with my metal detector, and I use all types of different detectors. This is just one of them. I, I kind of like it. I, I've done good with it, <coughs> but I've used all types. I have a friend who uh, he has one of the more expensive uh, machines, and he uses a scope, and he's got some beautiful coins out because he, he called me up and said, "Hey, I can't believe how deep I can go with this this uh, metal detector," and that enabled him to bring out some coins that he had scoped out years ago. He went back to old places he had already had them scoped out. That's the other thing you want to do because you don't make a recovery in one area after you hit with a scope. You may want to. Mark that down. That's what I do. I, I keep the area in mind. Later on, after after a good rain, get in there and see if you can make a recovery. Because sometimes it's just a little too deep for you. So, anyways, we're in here. We're working this area here. And an individual say, "Well, what happens if you don't make anything here?" I do it a lot of a lot of times on uh, film. You'll see films of mine where, hey, I I don't recover something. I just need that area there and I come back to it. That's all. What are you going to do? But I know that my scope's going to catch up with something, so I'm not worried about it. Okay. See, there's, there's a little bit of junk in there. This is how they hide. That's why I like this small coil. Hear it? Hear it break up a little bit? So there's a little bit right there.